Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue through our super awesome Basically series. For those of you who are new to this, this is basically going to be the series where we talk about the best awesomeness of deck techs that you could put together without spending a single rare or mythic to put these together. <laughs> So without further ado, let's go ahead and show off today's deck, a deck that I am simply calling, basically, Food. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content so you don't miss out on any of the gameplay, booster pack openings, deck decks, and so much more. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So our colors today are Jun, which means it's going to be black, red, and green. You're looking at an average mana curve of about 2.0. We're rocking 16 creatures, 4 instants, 4 sorceries, 12 artifacts, 8 enchantments, and only 20 lands. The gist of today's deck is looking at trying to combine together two previous basically decks that we've already kind of played with, which was again a Rakdo Sacrifice deck that took advantage of Blood Tokens, and the Golgari deck that took advantage of Graveyard Shanigans, utilizing Cauldron Familiar and Witches of it to gain a ton of value. But the twist this time is, we're going to be focusing on Food Tokens to get the most value out of our Sacrifice deck today. Starting in the 1-drop slot, you've seen this card many times already, but we'll touch upon it one more time, which is going to be Cauldron Familiar. ETBs to then make our opponent lose one life and you gain one life. You sacrifice a food to bring back the culture familiar from the graveyard to the battlefield. Going into the two drop slot, however, is where things get much more fun. So we have Tough Cookie. We'll talk about this card for just a brief moment. Tough Cookie here is a food golem 2-2 artifact creature. When it enters, you get to create a food token. You can pay three to make a non-creature artifact we control a 4-4 artifact creature until end of turn. And well, so and finally, you could also pay two to sacrifice a tough cookie and gain three life just like your food token. Really awesome, great utility at any part of the game. In the three drop slot, you'll have two copies of Experimental Confectioner here. When it enters, you get to create a food token, and then anytime you sacrifice a food, you get to create a 1-1 Black Rat Creature token, even though it can't block. No! This is a great option for us to then have a go-wide strategy, kind of like as a backup option for the deck. As far as how to sacrifice some of those foods, we'll also utilize Savvy Hunter. Two copies of this, we can utilize this to sacrifice our foods to draw some cards. Well, it will take, of course, two foods to do it. However, it can generate its own foods whenever it attacks or blocks. So it's a great option to just keep building up a ton of tokens. Other payoffs for the sacrifice fodder will be Mayhem Devil. You've seen me play this many times, of course. So anytime a player sacrifices a permanent, it'll deal one damage to any target, which is really great for our deck. As far as the non-creature spells are concerned, we have quite a few to actually talk about. So starting with the removal, you'll have Fatal Push here. With the Revolt ability being able to trigger off of our food and treasures, we'll have plenty of options to then get the max value out of it. As for Recursion, we'll also utilize Urbog Repossession here. This is actually a really sweet card for us because, again, we can bring back any one of our creatures from our graveyard to our hand. However, if you do kick it, you can then bring back another target permanent card from our graveyard to our hand. Not too many permanents, again, we're going to try to bring back, but this is a great way to provide some extra value to ensure that anything that does get blown up can can be brought back. Your other artifact that goes hand in hand with Culture and Familiar is going to be Witch's Oven. Obviously, I don't need to tell you how this card works. Basically, again, sacrifice a creature, create a food. And that's going to be pretty much all we need to ensure that we can get a ton of value out of our cards. In the two drop slot, you'll have Trail of Crumbs here. This is actually one of our sweet payoffs here, no pun intended. This will ensure we get a ton of extra card draw from our food tokens. Oni Cult Anvil here is also another great sweet payoff, which kind of goes a little bit hand in hand with what Culture and Familiar does with its combo of basically draining, pinging our opponent, and then just having chunk blockers. With Oni Call Anvil, however, we'll create some contracts by sacrificing a couple of extra artifacts and then create those contracts. We have another go white strategy with us on top of already Experimental Confectioner, but of course these constructs can also chump block, but if we have to sacrifice them, that'll also help us gain some life while also draining out our opponent for one. And then finally, in the 4-drop slot, this is again where things get really awesome for us, and it's actually one of our sweet... Boo! You stink! Sorry there. Payoffs for the deck. Knight of Sweets Revenge. This is actually a super cool card, so we'll talk about it briefly. It's a 4-mana enchantment that reads, When Knight of Sweets Revenge enters, you get to create a food token. Foods you control have tapped to add green mana, and then you can pay 7 mana and sacrifice the Sweets Revenge for creatures to get a pump of plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of food we control. You can activate it only, however, as a sorcery. So, if you manage to do go wide with your Oni Cult Anvil Constructs or your Experimental Confectioner food and then creating a bunch of rats, you can then, then cash this in in the end game, and then just hopefully just steamroll your opponent and get your win. 
Also, one single copy of Binding of the Old Gods here. The card will provide for us a lot of awesome options where we can again be targeted removal, get us a little bit of pseudo ramp, and also turn all of our creatures and death touchers. Run cute little thing you could do with this card, and it's actually hilarious is if you manage to get to the death touch part and then you save your sacrifice triggers with Mayhem Devil, that will have death touch, and you can actually ping out your entire enemy team for one point ETH, and they will all count with death touch on top of it. Just something to keep in mind. As far as your mana base is concerned, again, we are a super budget deck, so we're going to keep it as simple as possible. You have seven swamps, three mountains, four forests. You'll have some rivers overlook, which is perfect for our deck to ensure that we can get out exactly the lands we need. Also, it will trigger off with Mayhem Devil, so that's also another reason why to use it. And then two copies of Volatile Fall here, which may look a little strange originally, but hear me out. This is actually great for us in two ways. This will, again, take out key lands that maybe your opponent has we'll also be able to then pull out some treasure out of it which then it can be later sacked to help us fix our mana and also again trigger off mayhem devil if you do want to take this in the best of three and then get more value out of the deck here's going to be your best options for you for those control decks out there and those combo decks out there utilize duresses here just again pick away their key cards and discard them you'll have a single copy of bastard of remembrance here this is actually a really sweet option for us to then help us of course do extra life gain and train if your opponent again is trying to outgrind you you'll also have copies of spider food here it's a little expensive for artifact and enchantment hate but also it takes out creatures with flying and of course we want it because it creates a food token for us copies of tormod's crypt here are also free but it's also sweet because again you can either sacrifice it immediately with mayhem devil triggering or again just your catch-all for graveyard hate since we are going to create a ton of artifact cards we're going to throw in copies of fire weaver here and it's also kind of a cute little pet card of mine but it actually does really great damage whenever an artifact enters the battlefield we'll then be able to ping our opponent for one point of damage well then we'll have another pseudo wrath in the deck we'll have choking miasma here it all has the kicker ability so that way we can save maybe one of our creatures while we put minus two minus two on all other creatures until end of turn across the battlefield and then finally to round out our whole package here one extra copy of binding of the old gods just again if you need a little bit of extra support in the spot removal for again non-land permanence now as far as strategy and tips i can give you to get the sweetest kind of victory out of this deck basically it's just going to come down to of course in the early game get down your tough cookies get down your cauldron familiar and ideally get that witch's oven out and try to start pinging your opponent to start driving them crazy one of the biggest advantages is even if you can't get the cat oven of cauldron familiar and witch's oven out early your other backup plan as you've seen is going to be oni cult anvil even getting at least one food token out to sacrifice it to start generating a ton of value with those constructs will also do the exact same thing if you can get those out as well as cauldron familiar you're going to have a giant go wide army of constructs that will eventually be able to either chump lock out your opponent or just slowly get incremental damage against your opponent as you've already seen this combo of course just goes synergistically well almost too well with mayhem devil but by infusing green to it today you'll have a bigger advantage that previous versions of the deck does not have so with green as you see today our biggest advantage is we have card advantage from trail of crumbs you can then utilize your tough cookies ability to then create bigger creatures if you need to do some more blocking or be more aggro on the flip side the other way we can also grind out some other extra tokens is utilizing savvy hunter as you see today to then hopefully keep drawing some cards, and also get some more pings with Mayhem Devil. Think of, again, Experimental Confectioner as, again, a backup plan C to the deck to go wide with your constructs. And, of course, save your Knight of Sweets and Revenge until you know for sure not only can you bring it into play, but ideally, when you get to the next turn, you can then cash it in to then just make your giant army huge to overwhelm your opponent. The only disadvantage, of course, is we don't have anything to trample, so your opponent can still chump block if they go wider than you, but you'll put, hopefully, enough pressure on your opponent to get your win. Having said all that, your biggest disadvantage to the deck is graveyard hate and artifact hate because our deck lives and dies on our food tokens, our witches of it, and oni cult anvil pings. If we can't get that off, Granted, you can still try to do a little bit of aggro with your Tough Cookies and Mayhem Devils, but without those tokens, you're not going to get the full value out of this. So just be aware of that when you play this deck. Having said that, it is still versatile enough, as you see today, where again, you can either go wide, as I mentioned earlier, you can go big, or again, you just outgrind your opponent. Surprisingly, with only commons and uncommons, the deck is more than capable of doing that. Now, if you are interested in upgrading the deck to the next level, as always, I will show you on screen right now exactly other variants of these types of decks that we put together, and a couple of them are in slightly different variants of colors, but either way, whichever version you do like, and if you are interested, I'll leave those links, of course, and you can see on screen some of the examples that we have played in the past.
But with that out of the way, here are my final thoughts that I want to give on the deck. Overall, as you can see, this is not treading any new territory. Having said that, that doesn't mean it's a bad deck in any way, shape, or form. This deck has not only a lot of gas still in the tank, but also because of the past year of new sets, it's gotten a new lease on life only because most of the upgrades we have today, again, were from cards that were only uncommons. And that's actually pretty awesome for this deck because it still is an incredibly effective strategy any way you cut it. But to put it another way, if you're still a fan of Rakdos Sacrifice infused with green, if you're a fan of grinding out your wins, and if you're a fan of a versatile strategy that will just drive your opponent crazy, then I would definitely say, give this deck a try. And I assure you, whether you end up just pinging out your opponent to get your win, whether you want to make a giant rat army that goes wide, or if you're going to go super big with Knight of Sweets Revenge, either way, you'll have a lot of fun doing so. You'll be very surprised at how well the deck does, and you'll definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!